Hi, so I'm here from a Friday Sustainment Expert and I am talking to Evelyn Kwa, a long-term volunteer friend of mine. And she's, I just happened to volunteer her at the meeting and she's going to talk about her poster. Hi everyone, this is Evelyn. Um, I'm a uh, second year medical resident uh, at the University of Alberta right now and uh, thanks for watching. So uh, I'm presenting a poster, uh, it's called Rheumatological Causes of Subglottic Stenosis. Uh, basically uh, we've noticed uh, from uh, the, the rheumatology um, uh, cohort of patients uh, seen at the University of Alberta that several of them have been uh, diagnosed with subglottic stenosis, uh, which is the narrowing of the uh, the airway beneath the level of the vocal cords. And I just wanted to uh, present about different causes of this rare disease. Um, so in my uh, first case, it's a patient actually with sarcoidosis who was found to have subglottic stenosis um, secondary to this. And and the interesting part is he didn't have any other systemic manifestations of sarcoidosis. Um, and his, um, you will see a, a, a trend of the, the management of these patients. They present with uh, shortness of breath and respiratory distress, um, and usually require urgent tracheostomies uh, for uh, for airway protection. Uh, so he he was actually um, followed and had several flares of this uh, stenosis and treated with steroids and some methotrexate. His disease has been pretty well controlled, but he still needed a permanent tracheostomy. Um, second case is a more common cause of uh, subglottic stenosis in uh, autoimmune uh, diseases. Um, the patient was diagnosed with Wegener syndrome and she had stenosis um, of the subglottis. And uh, despite systemic treatment well, of both cyclophosphamide and cortical steroids, uh, she still had multiple flares and again uh, required multiple dilations uh, and um, mechanical fixing of her subglottic stenosis. And then finally, it's just a case with a patient with subglottic stenosis of an unknown etiology. Um, and her disease was actually quite bad, needing uh, drip-co resection. She was uh, treated a few times, had dilations of the subglottic stenosis. And as of today, her disease has been quite poor. Um, and so we just wanted to bring to light um, the severity of this, this, uh, of this uh, entity when people present. And a lot of it is just early um, recognition of, of how sick these people can potentially get and uh, getting uh, the expertise of ENT surgeons or thoracic surgeons on board to, uh, to provide airway protection and also monitoring for infections because people can get pneumonias from this type of uh, like stenosing of their airway. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed that and thank you for your time. Thank you so much, Evelyn.